It's all about Jesus. Amen. If it ever becomes about anything else, then there's a problem. It's all about Jesus and everything He did for us. Amen. We were lost and without Him. And He first loved us and He he loved us while we were yet far from Him. And we love Him because of the way He first loved us. Amen. Beautiful song. I love Him because He first loved me and gave Himself for me on Calvary's tree. Amen. Uh, This morning I'd like to speak to us about one of the scriptures that uh, always speaks to me in God's Word. Um, The walk. Give me a second. Microphone has been receiving, then not receiving. So I just put the volume up because it was sounding a bit soft, but now it went into that. The walk with God as Enoch walked with God, like Enoch walked with God. Amen. Amen. Not a long sermon, just stay with me. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Just there where you are. Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, Lord. And we want to thank you that when when our hearts start to get connected to you, like we did this morning, when we start to forget about everything else and start to worship you for who you are, the majesty on high, when we remember that you became flesh to die for us, the creator of everything died for his creation. Lord, when we begin to do that, then your presence begins to move in our midst. When we begin to worship you and praise you and honor you, then Lord, it is impossible for you not to come down. It's impossible for you not to honor our worship towards you with your presence in our midst. And Lord, we want to thank you for that this morning. We want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your grace. We want to thank you for your presence in this place. And Lord, we give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanksgiving. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, help me this morning to bring the word the way you want it to be brought. Not that I think or I imagine, but according to your word. There we go. Amen. Excuse me for jumping up and down the pulpit. I must walk around the stairs. Amen. So where does the scripture appear in God's word? Do we know? There's two places. A few, a few, a few places. I think it's two. You know, Genesis and Hebrews. Amen. So let's look at the first one in the book of Genesis. And we'll take it from there. So in Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 to 24, we read the account of a man named Enoch. Amen. And it says the following. It says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. In other words, he knew his wife and he had a child. He had a son and the son's name was Methuselah. So he begot him. So it says that Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, listen to this. Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years And Enoch walked with God. That's the second time it's mentioned there. That Enoch walked with God. And that's something very important that we're going to be looking at. Walking with God. And now listen to what it says here. And he was not, for God took him. Amen. Amen. It's beautiful. Some people want to look at it another way. God took him. In other words, it was the end of his life. No, it wasn't. God took him. He was here and then he could not be found. And nobody could find him because God translated him. Amen. God took him out of this life. And God took him into eternity without ever having tasted death. Amen? So in this we see something. There's two things that are very clear. One, he walked with God. And number two, the reward for walking with God was God came and took him. He was precious to God and God came and took him. Amen? And Enoch and Elijah are examples that speak to us of something just before the example we have of Jesus. Enoch, the first example... That men, when they had their fall from, from, from God in the garden, entered into death. Because the soul that eats of that tree will eat of death. Amen? Because the wages of sin is death. But there's a nice reminder in the person of Enoch, to all the people of his day, that there is another life after this life. Because if there wasn't one, where did God take him to? He was not, for God took him somewhere. God took him into the next life. Amen. And Elijah was an example for his day of the same thing. Enoch's day were reminded there's something coming after this life I live. Men want to forget that. 
Men don't want to think about judgment. They don't want to think about eternity. And they don't want to think about what comes after. Because it makes it easy for them to sin and do what they want to do. Because then there's no judgment. And hey, when I close my eyes here, it's just blackness. But when Enoch was taken, it was a reminder that there's life after this life. When Elijah was taken, he was a reminder to his generation. You don't just close your eyes here and everything's black. You're going to spend eternity in one of two places. Because there's a life that proceeds after this life. Amen. And then when Jesus rose again from the dead, he showed them that there's life. And when he ascended into heaven, he was alive forevermore and is alive forevermore in heaven. Reminders to generations across the ages. Amen. It's beautiful, isn't it? But it sits at such a strong reminder as well. Because if you read the account of Genesis, it's doing a genealogy. Like Adam had sons and daughters, and then we see it goes to Cain and Abel, and they had sons and daughters. And we see the genealogy. But there's something that I point out in that genealogy. There's two things in this scripture that don't appear with the rest of them. And the first one is this. None of the other people it speaks about says, And he walked with God. Amen. But it also says something else. The person before, in other words, Enoch's father, look what it says. When Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. After he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Jared lived a total of 962 years and then he died. That's before Enoch. Now look at after Enoch. Don't worry, the kids are just saying amen. <laughs> amen. Look after Enoch. It says, when Methuselah had lived, this is Enoch's son. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he became the father of Lemech. After he became the father of Lemech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Methuselah lived a total of 969 years. The oldest man ever to live. Now look what it says. And then he died. The generation before Enoch, his father died. The generation after Enoch, his son, died. But when you look at the scripture that speaks about Enoch, what does it say? You do not see that Enoch died. Beautiful, isn't it? You have this whole genealogy, and if you look at the genealogy, you look that God cares for men because their names are recorded in the Bible. But you see something worse than that. You see the curse run through the Bible. And he died. And he died. And he died. And he died. But then you get to Enoch. Amen. And he walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Amen. And there in the middle of that whole genealogy shines out this verse that God took him. He didn't taste of death. Amen. Do you know what it says about Enoch? Enoch did what Adam couldn't. Come on. Adam couldn't walk with God. And because of it, Adam died. But Enoch walked with God. And he pleased God. And he was not. And God took him. How? How did he do it? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at how do you walk with God and how do you please God? Because that's the two things we're looking at. How do you please God and walk with God? So that you can get the reward that God gives. Because the reward that God gives is always life. And life everlasting. Amen? Some people will argue with me. I'm not going to have a debate. I believe the two witnesses that come back are Enoch and Elijah. Because they never tasted death. Some people believe other things. I believe they're coming back because the Bible says once for a man to live and once to die and then the judgment. Enoch and Elijah haven't died. And God's law says a man must be born and he must die. I believe those two are coming back as the witnesses that are going to walk the earth. But that's my opinion. Amen. Because then they get killed. And then they rise again from the dead because God brings them back again. But how did Enoch walk with God? And I want to ask you, was it easy for Enoch? Because it's very easy for us to look back and say, Hey, Enoch didn't have the type of life we do. He didn't have the temptations we do. Enoch didn't have those temptations. Enoch didn't have TV, he didn't have movies, he didn't have the boss I have. He wasn't living in the busy society I'm living in. He didn't have the difficulty that I went through. So it was easier for Enoch to serve God. Do you know when Enoch lived? Enoch lived just before the flood. Enoch lived in a land that was filled with giants and filled with people who had wanted nothing but violence. Enoch lived in a more difficult time than we live. Because Enoch lived in a time when God got so cross with the world because it was filled with violence. He said, it's enough, I'm going to destroy this world. Yeah. Amen. Enoch didn't live in a good time. Listen to what Enoch says. 
Jude 4 to 16 speaks about it. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, only seven after Adam, prophesied about them, the people of his day. And he said, see, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone. Enoch is seeing down the line to when Jesus comes back again, what we're waiting for now. Amen. And he says he's coming back to judge everyone and to convict, listen, all of them of all their ungodly acts that they have committed in their ungodliness and of all their defiant words, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires and boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Do not believe in any way, shape and form that Enoch had it easier in his day than you have it now in your day. Amen. He had evil men in his day. He had giants, literal giants in his day. Amen. He had kings who were mighty kings in his day. And he had evil in his day that was crazy because God destroyed the earth. That's how bad it was in his day. Amen. So when you look at him, don't think that what he did is impossible or he had it easier. That's why he could do it and you can't do it. Amen. When you see the life of Enoch, when you see the life of Elijah, when you see the life of any single person in God's word, you need to understand they were made as you were made. Because when Enoch was created, we were all born into sin. He was born into Adam's line, wasn't he? So he wasn't born more perfect than you are. He wasn't born better than you are. Amen? It's just what he did. What he did made all the difference. And that's what I want to speak about. How can you and I please God? I don't know about you, but I, I desire to please God. I desire to be a man that walks with God and pleases God. How can you be a man or woman that walks with God and pleases God? My heart's desire is, Lord, do I please you? I know sometimes I have to repent because I know I'm not pleased with my own actions and my own attitudes. I'm sure God's not pleased with me as well. Amen. But I want to be somebody that pleases God. I want to walk with Him and I want to know Him and I want Him to know me and I want to please Him and I want to be known as a man that walks with God. Amen. Now when you read that scripture, it's very easy to think to yourself, how did Enoch walk with God? I don't believe that for 300 years while Enoch, the Bible says, Enoch walked with God 300 years. I don't believe God was manifestly present next to Enoch. But I, you, I can't believe that. I've got to believe there was a morning that Enoch woken up and his nose was maybe running and he didn't feel like a, And it didn't feel like God was with him. Amen? There must have been a time he was maybe working in the field. I don't know if he sowed, the Bible doesn't tell us, if he was a farmer or if he sowed wheat or what he did. The Bible doesn't say that. But there must have been a day when he was sowing and sowing and plowing and sweating and it wasn't. Got home and he's much and tired. God wasn't right there next to him. But the Bible says for 300 years he walked with God. But God wasn't manifestly next to him all the time. How? How did he do it? Now I just want to point three things out this morning. And then we can go home and have a lack of lunch and come back to this evening service. Amen? Just three things. This is how Enoch walked with God. By faith, by continual occupation of thought with him, with God. And the last point is a prerequisite. How can two walk together unless they agree? I believe this is how Enoch walked with God. This is how Enoch was a man that pleased God. In another way, you can say it this way. Enoch was the first man that was a man of the God's own heart. Amen. He was the first one. David is called that. But I believe Enoch was the first one who was a man of the God's own heart. Amen. Let's go further. Let's look at faith. Amen. The Bible speaks about it in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. Hebrews 11 starts that faith is the substance of things not seen, but the evidence of things hoped for. That, that chapter, Hebrews 11, the faith chapter in the Bible, speaks about Enoch and it says how Enoch did it. It said by faith. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he did not see death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken away, he was commended as one who pleased God. Amen. If you go further with that scripture, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. That's how Enoch pleased God. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. And if Enoch had a testimony that he pleased God, then Enoch must have walked with God in faith, though he saw him or not. 
Amen. Which means when times were going difficult for Enoch, he must have believed, I still trust God. He must have had faith. Amen. The first point of being a man that works with God, walks with God is you have to work out for yourself now what do you believe and what don't you believe. Because if I believe my heavenly father, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, is all knowing, all seeing, all present, then I know that even in my difficult situations when it feels like God is nowhere to be found, he's there. He sees, he knows, he hears, and he has all power to help me out of every situation I'm in right now. Then I'm walking with God by faith. Then when I hit a difficult situation, Lord, you said, and I'm walking with you in faith. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You said you're with me even until the end of the age. I walk with God in faith. Because without faith, it's impossible what? Never mind. It's impossible even to please Him. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him because I must know that He is. So work it out for yourself now. You've got to get to the point where it's not just head knowledge, it's heart knowledge. I know that God is real. I know that nothing exists outside of him. He holds all eternity in the palm of his hand. He looks at the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. He created all matter. All everything. And one day when the white throne judgment appears, he shall take everything and fold it up like a shirt and be done away with it. And out of him shall proceed a new heaven and a new earth. I know he's real. I know he exists. I know it with all my being. I'm more sure of him than the floor I stand on. Amen. Because the floor doesn't exist without him. Amen. I believe in him. I trust him. It's hard to explain the Godhead, but He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no dividing Him, but there's no confusing Him. Amen? He was with God in the beginning, and God was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and He dwelt among us. And we saw His glory as the only begotten Son of God. And when He was baptized in the Jordan, there's Jesus being baptized, the Father's voice speaking, this is my Son who I'm pleased with, and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. Amen? And I can't confuse Him, I can't divide Him. He's God, and I know He's real. When I say Jesus, I'm not just praying in my room. When I say that, I'm speaking to Him. Sometimes, I know it sounds strange, but sometimes when you go down on your knees and pray, imagine He's standing next to you. Just get your heart in that door. Imagine He's there because He is. When I say Jesus, my voice echoes in the throne room of God where Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. He's seated on the right hand right now. The lamb that was slain and the lion combined in one crowned the right hand of the Father. And when I say, my Lord, my voice echoes there. And He hears me. Don't tell me He collects my tears in a vial, but He doesn't hear my voice when I pray. No, my prayers are captured like incense. And the Bible says that in the book of Revelations, that the angel is going to take the incense and pour them out in front of God. Amen. He is. That's how you first walk with God, to know that He is. And if you know that He is and He sees everything and He hears everything and you're not going to get away with anything with God, I can't hide a thought from Him. He knows what I'm thinking. Never mind hide something I'm trying to do. God knows. I'm not going to get away with anything. So that's the first way you walk with God because you have a fear of God. He is. And He sees. The Afrikaans people used to say, There's an ongeseen oog in die ongeseen oor. There's an unseen eye that sees everything I do. If I do it behind closed doors, whatever I'm doing, there's an unseen eye that washes me. And that's the eye of God. Because there's nothing I can hide from Him. His ear hears my thoughts and my heart. Amen? Faith is the first way. That you want to walk with God, you walk with God by faith. Because without faith it's impossible to please Him. Enoch pleased God. Which means Enoch must have believed. God is real. I love Him and I serve Him and I'm going to walk with Him. I'm going to put my faith in Him and not do what the rest of the world is doing. Enoch must have walked separate from the people and the society of his day. He had to have. To please God, he had to have. He had to have. Amen? Now the second point. Continual occupation of thought with him. Enoch must have done this. Because there were distractions in his days. There were things that were going on around there. Amen? So to be able to walk with God, it's something that you and I need to cultivate. We need to set our hearts to keep our communication with God. Amen? What happens when somebody you love goes away? If your husband or your wife go away on a trip. Janine has to go away now for three weeks to some hair training college somewhere. And they're doing a course and she has to go and it's only in Durban and she has to be there. How's your heart going to be? How's your thoughts going to be? How's your mind going to be for those three weeks when she's gone? You're going to be thinking about her. You're going to be missing her. You're going to be sending her messages. Amen? So if we're in love with God... 
shouldn't our heart and mind be going towards God all the time? My heart is occupied with Him. Listen, they, they shoved that spear in his side and pierced his heart so that the last drops of blood which had not yet come out could be poured out. His, his heart was pierced to purchase my heart to himself. My heart is his. It might sound strange this morning, but I love my wife second. I love my children second. But I love Christ first because he gave me everything. My heart is his. I often tell him, take my heart and run away with it because oftentimes I feel like I'm not loving him like I should be. Lord, I want to love you deeper than I love you at the moment. Take my heart and run away with it. But my heart should be occupied there. Have you ever seen a couple just before they get married? A bride and a bridegroom. The church is considered the bridegroom. uh, The bride, sorry. And Christ is considered the bridegroom. What happens with the bride? Can you talk to her about anything else? For a week or two weeks or three weeks before her wedding. You know what she's talking about? The wedding. The dress. The cake. The venue. What's she thinking about a week before? She's thinking about her husband. Her her husband-to-be. She's thinking about the bridegroom. The bridegroom. The bridegroom. Amen. She's thinking about him the whole time. Amen. We're going to the Brailo Fundy Lamb. We're going to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Should we not be thinking about the clothes we're going to wear? Should we not be thinking about the venue we're going to go to? Should we not be thinking about getting ourselves ready? Should we not be thinking about the bridegroom? Listen, we've been married to Christ already by the Holy Spirit, but we're going to be more married to Him one day in heaven. In other words, we've been engaged right now because we've got the deposit of the Holy Spirit. But the marriage is still going to take place. What happens? Somebody's always thinking about that person, always thinking about that person, always thinking about that person. What happens when you stop thinking about a person? What happens when I just think of my wife a little bit less, a little bit less? What happens? The love becomes colder. And when the love becomes colder, I'm not interested in her anymore. Because I've gotten other things to be interested with. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Don't tell me he didn't make it a habit in his life to turn his heart and attention to God. He had faith. He knew that God was. And because he knew that God was, he pleased God. But because he knew that God was, what did he do? You can't know that God is and then ignore God. If you know that God is, then you're intimate with God. And your attention and your thoughts are going to God the whole time. The whole time. The whole time. Amen. That must be how Enoch walked with God. Look at what the scriptures say. I've got three of them for you. Isaiah 26.3. Listen to what it says. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Amen. Psalms 19 verses 14. May these words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen? Don't answer, but answer in your own heart. How much of the week that's passed, if you split it into days, how much time did you spend thinking about God this week? How much time did you spend meditating on Jesus? How many times did your heart get cast back to the cross where his hands and feet were pierced for you? How many times did you think about him this week? I'm not trying to accuse you of anything. This is the Holy Spirit that's reaching in a little bit. Amen? Sometimes put your hand in. Afrikaans says it nicely. I don't know the English. Put your hand a little bit there. Because God, 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 God wants to deal with me as much as he's dealing with you this morning. How much did I think about Jesus this week? How much did I think about the cross? How much did I thank Him? How much did I thank Him for His blessings on me? How much did I thank Him for saving me? When there's how many other multitude, millions of people that have not been saved or brought to His grace. How much did I think of Him? How much did I think of my Heavenly Father, my Lord Jesus? How much did I thank Him for the Holy Spirit that is my comforter, my counselor? The one who leads and guides me into all truth that knows my heart. That knows every thought before I think it and every word before I say it. How much did I glorify Him and praise Him this week? How does my Monday look? How does my Tuesday look? How does my Wednesday look? How does my Thursday look? How does my Friday look? When you become occupied with the one that has your heart, the things of this world are not entertaining to you anymore. Amen? Can we know the song? Look full in His wonderful face and all the things of this earth will become strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. You know why we fall? You know why we don't walk with Christ like we should be walking with Christ? Because we don't think about Him. 
And because we're not looking full in his wonderful face, because I know he's real, and I don't want to grieve him, I want to please him, and because I want to please him, I have communion with him. Amen? Because we, we get our eyes off of him and onto other things, and we look into other things, our love becomes dim, and because our love becomes dim, what happens? Then there's many days that turn to weeks, that turn to months, that I am not walking with him. I'm walking with myself. We like sheep sometimes. Have you seen how sheep walk and sheep graze? Head down. Looking for the next bit of grass to eat. Come on. And then the shepherd and the shepherd dog has to get the attention to lead the sheep so that the sheep can lift its head and look. You need to learn to lift your head. Lift your head to Calvary's tree where that cross is. Lift your head to where Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. Lift your head above this. Because this is designed to take your eyes off of what matters. Don't look to that which is seen, because that which is seen is temporary. But look to that which is unseen, because that which is unseen is eternal. Look to Christ. Amen. He must have looked to God in his heart. He looked so much to God that he saw Jesus that we're still waiting for. Remember what it says? God comes back on the clouds of glory with Many of his holy ones. How did Enoch know? The seventh from Abraham. You know how far that is from Jesus. How did Enoch know that the Lord is coming back on the clouds of glory? In other words, he knew and he saw the eastern sky split open. He saw Jesus come back on the clouds of glory with all of those that have gone before. And all the angels. He saw something that had not yet been revealed to anybody else. Only many thousands of years later was it revealed that Jesus Christ is coming back on the clouds of glory. People like Ezekiel and Isaiah saw it in the book of Revelations. How far back was Enoch? Why did Enoch see it? Because he spent days, hours, nights, mornings, weeks looking at God with his heart. He was looking so much that God said, let me show you what's to come. Amen. Isn't it beautiful? That's how Enoch spent 300 years walking with God. And do you think it was easy? I guarantee you, he cultivated a habit. English word, proclivity. He made it a habit of turning his attention, turning his heart, turning his mind, turning his thoughts to Jesus. He made it a habit. And because he made it a habit, he walked with God for 300 years. Amen? Amos 3.3 There's another reason and another thing that I think Enoch had to have done, otherwise he couldn't have walked with God. Because Amos 3.3 says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? It is impossible that Enoch could have walked with God. Because, listen, the Bible says Enoch walked with God. So if the Bible says he walked with God for 300 years, trust me, he walked with God. And the Bible says it, for 300 years Enoch walked with God. And he pleased God. And he was not for God to him. Amen. How could he walk for 300 years with God? He had to have been agreed with God. Which means anything else that could have grieved God, he turned his back on it. Everything that could have separated him from God, he turned his back on. So which means everything that does not please God was not in God's way. That's why I say he was a man after God's own heart. He loved God so much that he was in tune with God's heart that he was doing things the way God wanted it to do. If somebody wasn't walking God's way, I'm telling you now, Enoch walked away from it because he was walking with God. He chose to walk with God. And that meant, because Christianity, there's always a price to pay. That meant he chose not to walk with many others. The Bible doesn't say it, but you've got to look into these things sometimes. Maybe there was family that he had to choose not to walk with. Because they weren't walking with God, because they weren't agreed with God, because what they were doing was opposite to God. So Enoch had to not walk with some family. If there were friends of Enoch's youth, and they were not walking according to God's ways, he had to choose not to walk with them. I don't know it, I can't say it. But in terms of, of human circles, I believe Enoch must have been lonely in a certain sense. But he was not lonely because he walked with the creator of heaven and earth. He separated himself from everything else and his day was rotten. If there was more than Enoch that served God in that day, I'm not sure. But Enoch walked with God. Which means he agreed with what God was doing and what God was saying in God's ways. Which means he must have walked in holiness, he must have walked in righteousness, he must have walked in peace, he must have walked in love. He must have walked according to God's ways. Amen. So if he could walk according to God's ways. And remember, Enoch had no Bible. Was anything written then? Not yet. 
Nothing was written yet. God hadn't yet given the first five books to Moses. When he hid Moses in the rock and said, I'll show you my back parts. I'll explain to you the story up until now. Amen. He hid him there. Hadn't been written yet. Enoch with no Bible, according to God's leading, walked with God and pleased God. But we've been given God's word. A light on my path and a lamp to my feet. I've been given the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. I've been given preachers, I've been given teachings, I've been given everything that Enoch didn't have. I should be able to walk with God more than Enoch did. Amen. Shouldn't I? I have more than Enoch did. Amen. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? 1 John 2.6 He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Amen. If I'm in Christ... I'm in Him and He's in me. I am His. If I say, I am a Christian, I'm a Christian, which has been abused recently, that word, that's why we all now say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the living God. No, but I'm a Christian also. If I'm a Christian, then I must walk as Christ walked. And that's tough. It's tough, isn't it? And that's why we sing, I want to live the way He wants me to live. I want to walk the way He wants me to walk. Amen. Because if I'm going to be a man of God and a woman of God, what does that denote? Just saying it. If I'm a man of God, if you're a woman of God, then I'm of God. I'm of His law. I'm of His ways. I'm of His spirit. I'm of His word. I'm of His commandments. I'm of Him. That's why I'm walking with Him. So it's not my ways and my thoughts and my wants and my desires. It's His word and His spirit and His way and His statutes and His glory and His honor, His spirit. Amen. 13.5, John. I have set you an example so that you should do as I have done for you. This specifically is talking where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. But you can see it's deep, deeper. Jesus is saying, look at my whole life. I've set you an example. Walk as I walked. If you want to be the child of my father, walk as I am because I'm his son. Yes. And then you'll be his child and his son as well. He's saying, follow me, be humble, wash the other's feet. He's saying, follow me, walk as I've lived. Be as I have. If Enoch walked with God for 300 years, he has to have done it that way. In faith. Because without faith it's possible to please God. He must have continually set his heart and his mind to have communion and fellowship with God. Which means he must have taken his eyes off of other distractions. Which means at times I believe he must have walked alone. And then he walked according to God's way and God's word. Two cannot walk together unless they be agreed. And God's not going to agree with my way. I have to agree with His. Because I'm not God, He's God. Which means who's changing in the situation? I change. I must decrease, He must increase. Amen? He's the sovereign creator of all things. He's the Holy One of Israel. In Him is no shadow of turning, no darkness, no evil. God is God. His holiness, His righteousness, His pure peace and pure love. He wants only good for us. And if you're going to walk with God, you're going to do it that way. Amen. So I'd like to encourage you. Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. Do you see there's a condition. And there's a blessing. Amen. He's dead. His father, dead. His son, dead. Him. He walked with God. And he was not. For God took him. No death in his case. Only life. But the condition is, will you walk with Him? Because if you will walk with Him, then know that He is. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Keep your connection with Him. Continual connection and communication with Him. Because looking full in His face, all the other things of earth become strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So because I believe Him and I trust in Him and I have faith in Him, I look to Him. And He's the author and finisher of my faith. What I've entrusted to Him, He shall complete and present before the Father. Perfect. He'll bring me there. Amen. And then I've got to walk His way, not my way. And the question is this. You've got to decide what you want to do. Because if you'll give your life to Him, I guarantee you, in this life, it'll far surpass whatever you've ever thought. 
He will look after you. He will bless you. He will reveal himself to you. He will give you his Holy Spirit. He'll look after you physically, spiritually, financially. At the end of your life, you'll look back and say, I thank God he saved my soul. I thank God I could walk with him by the leading of his Holy Spirit. Because if I look back, I have no regrets. Yeah, sometimes it was uphill. Sometimes it was downhill. Yeah, sometimes it was lonely. Sometimes it was difficult. But all through this path, he has walked with me. All through this path, he has led me. Through the valleys and on the mountain tops, he has always been the shepherd of my soul. He's never left me nor forsook me. And at the end of your life, closing your eyes on your sick bed one day, you won't have terror. You'll say, I'm just going to go with him who has been faithful to me all these years. And I'm going to step into a place where there's no sorrow, no tear, no temptation. I'm going to be in glory with Christ forever one day. Amen. John 14, 3 speaks about it. Jesus says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again. And I will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. The reward for walking with Him is life. And life everlasting. And being with Him forever. Amen. When I see that, Enoch walked with God. And he pleased God. And God took him. (laughs) I don't know about you, but I want that. I want to walk with God. I want to please Him. And I want Him to take me. And I want to be with Him for eternity. Amen. Let's stand and we can close in prayer. It's possible for you. Amen. It's possible for us to walk with God. To please Him. Amen. Let's close our eyes. We can close in prayer. I'm going to close in prayer, but then we're going to have somebody else close the service in prayer. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this word. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanksgiving. Lord, we want to walk with you. Lord, there's something I know about your word. You would not put something in your word that was possible for one person that is not possible for the rest of us. And when I look at your word, there are men and there are examples in your word, women as well, who chose you over everything else and you walked with them and you blessed them. When I look at Enoch, it's just one of the examples. I then look at Moses, who you spoke to as a friend. I look at Joshua. I look at Elijah. I look at Elisha. I look at David. I look at so many examples in your word, Lord. Lord, if it was possible for them, it's possible for us. And what you've done for one, you can do for us. The choice is simple. What do we want? We've got to face facts. What do I want? Do I want what this world offers or do I want what God has for me? Because if we want what He has, Lord, Lord, if we want what You have for us, then we can deny the rest, we can look to Jesus, and we can know You and walk with You as they knew You and walked with You. Lord, help us to make that decision this morning in this church and say, Lord, as Enoch walked with You, I desire to walk with You. As You were a friend with Moses, I desire You to be a friend with me. Lord, take me, Lord, to mountaintops and speak to me with Your still small voice like You spoke to Elijah, Lord. Lord, let me be a man after Your own heart like David was. Lord, I want to know You and serve You in spirit and in truth. I believe that You are. Lord, I want to continue my communication with you Lord and Lord when I want to be agreed with you and walk with you all the days of my life so that I can be with you where you are one day and I thank you for it Lord in Jesus name Amen Amen